And Guruji now continues with the line Ji Jat Ranga Ke Nav. Ji Jat Ranga Ke Nav. Ji means beings. Jat here means types of beings. We know the word Jat from caste. But here it's talking about categories. Different variations. Ji Jat Ranga. Rang means colors. Nav means names. So Guruji is saying, just for a moment stop and think. How many beings? How many variety of beings? How many different names of beings? How many different colors of beings? Can you imagine that there are? Just on this one planet alone. And if there are so many on just this planet, we talk about this Jorasi Luck, 8.4 million types of beings. If this planet alone holds that many different variations of species, then Guruji has already told us, Tarti Hor Pare Hor Hor. There are countless other Earths. Countless other planets, solar systems, galaxies. Each one filled with its own set of unique animals, plant life and beings. From the smallest microorganisms to the largest beasts on the planet. And let's look at that variation even further. Think each and every human being is completely unique. You can't even say that all humans are the same. Each and every unique individual has never been created before in history, will never be created again in the future. Each animal is unique. Each plant each leaf is completely unique. And each of us have our own lives, our own unique destinies written for us, our actions, experiences, our outcomes. So Guruji is beginning to show us that there is no point trying to calculate the scale of what we're talking about. And although there are countless beings of countless colors, names and variations, Guruji continues to say, don't forget Sabna Likya Vuri Kalam. All have been written with that continuous single pen. There is one pen that writes the story of all of these countless vari variations of beings. Guru Nanak Dev Ji tries to get these pundits, these scholars, to realize how limited their thinking really is when they think that they can quantify the universe. Guruji wants us to put aside our thoughts and our ideas our opinions about the universe and simply sit back and enjoy the magnificence and the glory of the universe. And to understand and keep our awareness at the back of our mind that this has been written with one single pen. Guruji goes on to say, E lekha likha jane koi. Is there anyone here who can write? This story. E Likha, this writing, this story. Likha Jana Koi. Who can know how to write this story? Is there anyone who can accurately write a description of the entire universe from the beginning right to the present moment? Every action of every being. Who can write such a thing? 
every microorganism, every planet, every star that has ever existed, that's been written by that one pen. Is there anyone here who can write such a thing? And even if there was such a person, Guruji says, Lekha, Likya, Geta Hoi. If you were to write it down, what would that voluminous text look like? That written text, what would it be like? Guruji is making us realize that when we are within our own little universe of our own world, we don't appreciate the scale of what we're in, the magnitude of where we are, the brilliance of what is in front of us. So why waste our effort thinking about ourselves all the time? Thinking that we can accurately describe anything about the universe. Any thought like this has only one impact. It adds to our own personal fortress. It adds to our ego because we think we have some ability to do something in this universe. Guruji doesn't describe the universe. Here, he simply brings it to our attention. And Guru goes on to say, Geta taan suhaleo ru. We heard this word taan before. Gave ko taan, hove kise taan. It's around the same idea. Some think of its, some sing of its great power. Only if they've been given the power to sing. Now Guruji says, look at the power of the whole universe. Geta Taan, wow, what a great power. Suhalio Rup, beautiful form. What is the power that creates this beauty all around us? When you observe it without your mind, Simply observe, you will be astounded what is in front of you. You will be lost for words if you just took a moment to step out of your mind and simply observe the universe as it is. That unlimited power, that indescribable beauty, Geta Taan Sahalyo Rup. Keti daat jane kaun kut. Daat is gifts. What amazing gifts at every moment. Jane kaun kut. Kut here, the word means kutana, which means to estimate or to value. Who can know the value of this? Who can estimate the value of this? Keti daat. What Great gifts are coming all the time. Jane kaun kut. Who can know how to value this? Kita pasao eko kavao. Kita created. Pasao is pasara, expanse. The sheer expanse of the universe. All of this expanse, all of this creation from one single command. One single voice, one instruction, eko kavao, one word. This creative expanse comes from a single command. And that command is the utterance of Oankar. The universe is not something that happened in the past. The creation isn't something that happened once and now is just simply the result of what we see. When we talk about Oankar being the voice that created the universe, it isn't something that's in the past. It's something that's happening right now. This is why Oankar 
has that infinite element to it. Ik The kar is unlimited. That's why we see it in that design. That tail continues and continues. That ikwankar, that utterance that created the universe, is still singing right now. It is still going. It is always being spoken. Even now, this is onkar. This is why Ik Onkar is such a powerful mantra. Within it is contained the entire universe, from the one who creates and the one who is creating. But it is only one. Kita Pasao Ik Only that oneness has the power to do this. And what do we see as the result of this one word? This te hoe lak dariao. This te from this hoe occurs lak hundreds of thousands. Dariao means rivers. Here the word lak doesn't mean one hundred thousand. It just implies a very large number. Countless, huge. From this eko kavao tiste hoe lakadariao. From this, countless rivers flow. From one, the many is seen. Many streams flow. One word, one divine command, countless output. And it continues, and it continues to write. This Vuri Kalam, this pen of Omkar, continues infinitely across all beings, across all planets, across all solar systems. This is happening now. For a moment, let's take a step back to study what the words are that are being said here. Why has Guru Nanak chosen to use the word rivers? Why rivers? Why not mountains? Yep, that's one way. Maybe the Ganga, which is seen as the holiest, is a way to bring people's awareness that actually you're just looking at one river, but look at the billions of rivers all around. And I think that's a really interesting point. The river never stands still. It's not a lake. It's not a pond. It's a river. It's flowing. It's always heading somewhere. It's continuously changing. There's a really famous Greek poet called Heraclitus, about 500 BC. He was famous for this one saying, he said, no man steps into the same river twice. And the Buddhists have a very similar phrase. They ask the question, can you step into the same river twice? You step in, you come back out. When you step back in, it's not the same river. Nothing that was there a moment before is there now. All of it changes. Even the bed, the river bed itself, has moved on. All the water has moved, all the plant has moved, all the fish, all the beings, all the creatures. You can never step into the same river twice. This is the river of life. Every moment is unique. You know, when you look at someone, you look at them as though they're the same person they've always been. But nothing is the same. They're not the same. You're not the same. The moment's not the same. 
Gurbani has a very beautiful line that says, Sahib Mera Neet Nava. My master is always new. At every moment, he is new. Never the same. So we hold on to issues in our life as though they've been with us for an age. But at every moment, ask yourself, <coughs> what is the issue now? We like to carry the baggage of all of our past with us. We like to hold on to all of those. And hold on to all of our aspirations of the future at the same time. Don't you go anywhere past, but future, you need to stay with me as well. I'm heading in one direction and one direction only. But a river is always changing. Where a river was flowing in one direction in a few years' time, it's meandered into somewhere else. And the river doesn't choose. And the banks don't choose. And the sea that it's going to doesn't choose. It's just an unfolding. Nobody knows. So Guru is just trying to bring us to a moment of awareness that says, just stop and see it for what it is. Stop counting, stop labeling, stop analyzing. Just see the beauty of this river. Suhali or Ru. This beautiful thing that's just happening right now. There's only one way that you can do that. And that's to be present now. When your mind is in the past, in your memories, or it's in your hopes and desires of the future, it misses something. In the present, even now, you can hear the sound of Omkar just as it continues. This is the essence of meditation. And the one listening is part of that. The Omkar is not separate from you. You are that Omkar. In fact, you have nothing to do with it. Whether you're here or not, it continues. You're part of it. But you have to feel the presence, not with the mind. The mind will be asking where. I can't see it. Where? What? Why? So Guruji is taking us from theory into experience. From logic, from rationale, we can have all the opinions we want. But when we know it, when we experience it, then who can describe it?